Six weeks into his checkpoint journey, our next speaker is a husband, a father of three, a lifter of weights, and protector of clouds. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the founder of Protego and now Checkpoint's head of cloud go-to market strategy, TJ Gonin. Hey. Okay, so actually the guys in the production asked me to give them back five minutes. So if you saw me speak earlier, this might be actually faster. So brace yourself. Let's start with a piece of good news. Geek is the new sexy. It's really important actually for us, we were just talking in the backstage, being geeks was never so much fun. You know, we grew up in Israel, your mother wanted you to be a lawyer or a doctor. Now, definitely in Israel, everybody the mothers want the kids to be programmers, startup entrepreneurs, cybersecurity people. There's movies about us. Geek is the new sexy. Be proud of it. Celebrate it. This is a good time for us geeks. Be a geek. <laughs> so I'm going to talk about uh, the DevOps mentality and this shift that we're seeing in the world into software automation, infrastructure as code, DevSecOps. You've been hearing a lot about it. You're going to hear more about it in the next couple of days and just generally speaking during your life. So DevOps, but the, the pictures that you see here, check me out later. If you Google DevOps engineer, all the pictures, Google images, that's how they're going to look like. So now you know that a DevOps engineer has a beard, he's a bit overweight, <laughs> and he looks like that. Check me out. That's the way they look like. Now, this new DevOps mentality, this new developer-centered world, is what's really happening around you. And the idea of DevOps, when you Google the term DevOps, you'll run into a lot of terms. Software automation, devs, you know, development automation, continuous integration, CI, CD, you all heard these terms. At the end of the day, what these people are trying to do is to automate continuously the development of software and shipping it and making it run. If an old manufacturing line for development used to be very manual, you remember the days, every three months we release a new update. The new manufacturing line, whether you're experiencing today in your organization or you will experience it tomorrow, is automated. It looks like this, like the picture here. They want to deliver all the time, continuous delivery. The time difference between writing a piece of code and the time it actually runs somewhere is shortening. And the developers, your developers, in your organization, they want it to be zero. And from a mindset perspective, as you know, developers and security don't really go together. At the end of the day, it's not their job. So as far as they're concerned, the fact that they are now using 100 microservices and now they're launching five new accounts in the cloud and they're using open source, they write a piece of software, they go to a garbage can, they pick up a piece of code, they put it in it and they run it. It's your problem. Deal with it. Yes, I'm going to change my software five times a day. Deal with it. Yeah, it's going to be in the cloud. Oh, just a second, in another cloud. Oh, just a second, let me, let me launch five more of these. Deal with it. Your problem, deal with it. I'm a developer. What do you want? The business pays me to run super fast. Now, our mindset in this world of running super fast, think about it, they want to run fast. Security in the perceived concept of developers and business people is literally the opposite of fast. We're the anti-Christ of fast. Someone wants to run really fast, what do we say? Whoa, 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 just a second. Just a second. Let me configure my firewall. Let me scan the code. Let me sh make sure that we're compliant. Let me give me two, three weeks. That doesn't work in today's environment. This is how we look like in the world that needs to move fast. This concept of guardrails, right? We, we like guardrails. By the way, think about the concept of guardrails. Close your eyes, visualize a guardrail. Does it sound like fun? It sounds limiting. It sounds like if I'm trying to move really fast, you're going to electrify me. Doesn't sound like fun. These guys want to run fast. We look like bumpers. Every time they want to run fast, we're bumpers as security people. 
The biggest challenge with this thing is that we lost the battle. You cannot say no. Johnny, our, the CISO for Checkpoint, is going to present tomorrow. Try to ask him what happens if a development organization wants to launch something new in the cloud somewhere, and Johnny says, whoa, no. He's going to lose the battle. The world doesn't belong to no anymore. But we live in an age of yes. You have kids, right? Most of you look above 18. You have kids. When was the last time you said no to your kid and he was okay with it? Kids, to the, I remember when I said no, when I, my dad asked me something and I said no, it was okay. Worst case scenario, he'll slap me a bit. Today, you say no, the, it's like the kid says, what? What do you mean no? It's like a, you know, like a blue screen, general protection fault. What do you mean no? You know, we live, I live in the US. It's this age where you order like a 5,000 pound TV, you click the button, you, you swipe, buy now, you get a text, your TV is on your way, on its way. I said, what? Two minutes after, two hours delivery, knock on your door, the TV is, it's now. It's a world of now. No is not an option. You lost the battle. The problem is that this new job description is not security anymore from the developer perspective, from the business perspective. It's stay out of the way. That's your job description. Stay out of the way because you can't say no, but you still need to be there, which is a huge issue. You still own security. So the biggest challenge for us in this next generation that is not security super important, but it has to stay out of the way, is how do we balance this thing? How do we actually work with developers and with the DevOps culture, this automation culture, in order to still deliver a secure, continuous business? So I'm going to give you two tips. We only don't have a lot of time, so I'm just going to give you two tips of the way that I think about it, and maybe it will help you. There's two steps. Step number one is what I call trust. Build trust with your developer and developer uh, DevOps operations. In order to build trust, you need to understand them. So think about it this way. The road, you can't say no anymore. You have to find a way to say yes, right? Find a way to say yes. The road to yes moves through no with a K. You have to know what they are going through. I'll give you a very simple example. The life cycle of a developer is he writes a piece of software, he deploys it. He moves on to the next software, next development. If you come back to him after two days and say, hey, man, you have problems in your code, he hates you. He moved on. He doesn't even remember what he wrote two days ago. He's probably in the, first, in the third version of the code he deployed. And he's, and he's deploying it through a CI CD continuous integration, continuous deployment pipeline. If you're not there, you come back to him after a week or two, he's, he's gone. So in order to understand the experience that you need to solve to, you have to understand what the experience is. You need to understand the DevOps people and the developer, what is their life cycle. You need to hug a developer. So task number three for you guys, when you go back home to your company, find the first developer you see. If you're in the US, ask for permission. If you're, not, if you're in Israel, just do it, hug him. <laughs> Say, dude, I love you. I know it doesn't look like that, and I know it looks like I'm just trying to be in your way. I actually want to know what does your life look like? How do you deploy code? How fast do you move on to the next thing? What does that look like? And then you need to develop solutions that live inside his context. So for example, if you want to do vulnerability scanning, all the power to you, do it at the point of deployment. Not five days after, after it's already running. Do it at the point of deployment. You want, so you want him to put permission, I get data in the cloud, for the ones of you that deal in the cloud. He's deploying all these microservices and he needs to give them permission. What do they need access to? This Lambda functions, containers. And you're asking him, hey, what do you need access to? He says, I don't know, everything? Of course everything. Everything doesn't break anything. Now you want to sit with him and configure it. No, give him tools to automate that piece. Give him a tool that says, hey, use this, this will automatically, for example, generate permissions, check them out. If they're good, go with it. You helped him do his job securely. You didn't add work to him. You removed friction and you're in his context. So the concept that I want you to think about is stop thinking about guardrails, even though I know all of you here love guardrails. Stop thinking about it. Think about a paved road, okay? A road. And you say to the developer in DevOps, hey, this is a road I built for you. As long as you stay there, 
I'm fine. Use this tool. Generate permissions. Use this tool to check vulnerabilities in the point of deployment, at the point of deployment. Between us, security people, if he moves from the road, electrify him. I don't care. But first, give him the road. Talk his language. So that's number one. That's the trust. And again, in order to build trust, you have to understand what he's going through. The definition of done, you know you got there when you say, hey, use this. As long as you use this, we're fine. Now, the problem is that obviously you can't trust everyone all the time. And it's a dangerous world, and it might go around the tools, and maybe there will be a malicious actor, and it will come into your runtime environment. So at the end of the day, after you trusted the developer, you have to build a no-trust mindset. And the no-trust mindset says, hey, listen, I love you, and I love all of you, but I'm going to assume that something bad is going to happen, that if you put something in the runtime environment, it's not going to be configured. When you I I'm just going to assume that you're going to launch five new cloud accounts without me knowing. So I need to make sure that these things are protected, even though you went around my paved road. The key to the no trust concept is to automate zero trust. Because you cannot do, ma think about it, he's deploying five times a day. If you now want to do zero trust, for example, you want to make sure that there's a firewall in front of it, that the workloads are protected, that you checked for vulnerabilities, and if there's something misconfigured, you can fix it. You cannot do this manually. For the ones of you that are in organizations that are already moved to modern application infrastructure and cloud, these things happen 50 times a day. You ask accounts, hey, how many cloud accounts do you have? They say 50, just a second, 60, just a second, 70, 80. It's a click of a button. They launch a new account. In order to think zero trust, you have to automate zero trust. So the automate zero trust means that if a new account is getting launched, automatically there's whatever you want to happen for a protected account. A firewall gets launched automatically in front of it to prevent threat. Workload protection, whether it's functions, containers, attached to, this, to the workloads automatically. Profiles get created automatically. Compare it to PCI benchmark. If there's something wrong, automatically remediate. It has to be automated because your customer or what you're trying to protect is automated. So you have to automate zero trust. And the definition of done here, you know you got there when you say, Hey, use this. If you use this, we're fine. And go for it. Because protection is always going to be there. And it's as automated as, you, as your development cycle. The way to think about this, the trust zone is development, build, and staging. That's, a trust. That's where you trust people. You help them there. You give them paved roads there. The runtime environment, whether it's if it's in a cloud, it's a production environment, or if it's on-premise, your production environment is zero trust. You don't trust anyone. You make sure that protection is always there, no matter how it, the workload or the application got there. So these are the zero trust uh, area and the trust area. Part of the issue is that for us security, we don't build this automated manufacturing line. Our current manufacturing line looks like this. It's very, very manual. In application security, if someone here in the audience works in application security, it's the definition of this thing. Give me three weeks to put my uh, firewall in learning mode. Three weeks, it's going to change five times. Your learning is irrelevant the minute it started. Let me talk with this guy to do vulner It can't be. It has to be automated. Use these two days, and Dorit is going to talk later about what we're doing. You're going to have one-on-one -on -one meetings. Go see the tech rooms. We think automated. We understand this thing. A lot of our roadmap and our effort at Checkpoint is put into building automation into the trust area and into the zero trust area. So spend some time in the tech rooms, listen to the Ritz presentation. We're going to talk about a lot of these things and how they integrate into our Cloud Guard family and into our other products. Just want to finish with a story about why automation is important. If you've ever, so this is a picture from Israel. They're now driving these electric scooters. I actually saw them here. No helmets, by the way, super dangerous. If you've ever been to India, someone been to India recently? No one? Good. Try to, try to drive in India. Look at the Google image or Google video driving in India. It is crazy. It's insane. insane. I wouldn't drive a tank there, how dangerous it is. But there's like millions of scooters all over the place. Millions. And no one wears a helmet. No one wears a helmet. And I'm seriously, YouTube video this thing. It's unbelievable. And when you stop people, so I was there and I said, what? 
super dangerous. And you ask people why they don't wear a helmet, even though the roads look like this and it's so crowded, on a scooter, super exposed. You know what the answer is? Any guesses? Sorry? It doesn't look cool. Almost. It's very simple. It's not comfortable. Not comfortable. People will sacrifice security for comfort any day. If you don't make it easy for your developer in your DevOps environment, they're going to go around you. They'll sacrifice security. None of us wore seatbelt before it was a law. You have to make it easy. And I want you to remember, whatever you're working on right now as a security project, with checkpoint, outside checkpoint, whatever you're working on, you ain't done. You're not done until it's automated. You finish the project, you think you finished it, it's not automated, you're not done. You have a next milestone. You have to automate everything. If there's a manual part in your process, you're not done. Demand automation from your vendors, from your partners, from whoever you're working with. Ask them, is this automated? Otherwise, you'll be like this guy, and this guy will get his ass fired. Make sense? Okay, thank you very much. John. Sure.